ಭಜಹುರೆ ಮನ ಶ್ರೀನಂದನಂದನಾ ಭಯ ಚರನಾರ ಬಿಂದ ರೇ ಭಜಹುರೆ ಮನ ಜಯ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಜಯ ನಿತ್ಯನಂದ ಜಯ ದ್ವೈತ ಚಂದ್ರ ಜಯ ಗೋವರ್ಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಜಯ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಜಯ ನಿತ್ಯನಂದ ಜಯ ದ್ವೈತ ಚಂದ್ರ ಜಯ ಗೋವರ್ಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಕೈ ರೀಡಿಂಗ್ ಸಮ್ ಮೋರ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಚರಿತಾಮೃತ ಅಂಚಲೀಲ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ 3 ಅಂಡ್ ದಿ chapter is titled uh, the glories of haridas takor so we pretty much finished the background for the offense of uh, this man named ramachandra khan a uh, landholder zamandar landholder big land holder big man big person and uh he saw that Srila Haridas Thakur was being respected as a devotee he couldn't tolerate that Haridas Thakur was gaining so much respect among the people of his district the Zamindar's district so he became envious of Haridas Thakur and as a result tried to uh defame Haridas Thakur and to do that because Haridas Thakur was a spotless uh, pure Vaishnava there actually was no uh, defect in his character so the zamindar thought ramachandra thought khan thought uh, to engage a prostitute to seduce Haridas Thakur into an illicit relationship and with uh, his constable present uh as a witness then uh when this took place uh he would then arrest Hari Das Thakur and expose his activities to the people and show that uh how foolish they were to give their regard to someone who cannot even control his senses So this is if it had occurred then it would have been a disqualification for Hari Das Thakur having a relationship with a prostitute a sexual relationship he had a relationship with the prostitute as guru she accepted him as her guru it was a transcendental relationship there was nothing uh nothing uh sinful or illicit or wrong about the relationship even though they were alone for some days together and at night Haridas Thakur in his cottage and the prostitute sitting outside his doorstep sitting in front of the tulsi plant Haridas Thakur kept there and the cottage was described as being in a solitary place in the forest <coughs> so it was a risky proposition for Haridas Thakur you could say because people will talk and uh even if there is nothing wrong then still just by the situation itself then people may draw some conclusion but they didn't because Haridas Thakur's character was spotless there was nothing could not nothing could have gone wrong because this was the character of Haridas Thakur so strong in Krishna consciousness so he took shelter of the holy name and uh after a couple days the prostitutes sent there to uh 
seduce him, she also took shelter of the holy name through the aegis, through the uh, via media of the namachari of the holy name, Shilharidas Thakur. So, we're on text 150 today, beginning there. Sarvagya Nityananda Oila Tara Gare Ashiya Vasila Durga Mandap Upare <coughs> Lord Nityananda, who is omniscient because he is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, came to the house of Ramachandra Khan and sat down on the altar of the Durga Mandapa. Purport. Well to do Hindu gentlemen constructed their houses with a place called the Durga Mandapa for the worship of the goddess Durga. There they generally held worship of the goddess every year in the month of Ashvini, October. Amachandra Khan possessed such a Durga Mandapa at his residence. Nityananda Prabhu. <laughs> Omniscient means he knows everything because he is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Came to the house of Ramachandra Khan. Mean, Omniscient means he knew what happened with Ramachandra Khan and Haridas Thakur. So he came to the house of Ramachandra Khan and Ramachandra Khan being very wealthy it says a well-to-do Hindu gentleman uh, they constructed their houses with a place called the Durga Mandap for the worship of the goddess Durga and this is something uh, that is described here as an altar so something like an altar and Nityananda Prabhu came and sat down on that altar. The next verse, 151, Aneka Loka Jana Sange Angana Barila Bitara Hoite Ramachandra Sevaka Pathaila. When the Durga Mandap and courtyard were filled with crowds of men, Ramachandra Khan, who was inside the house, sent his servant to Lord Nityananda. Purport. In those days and even now, the palatial buildings of respectable people, especially in the villages of Bengal, were divided into two parts. The inside part was especially meant for the family, and the ladies would live there unexposed to men. That part was called Bitara Badi, or inside house. In the outside house, or Bahir body, the respectable gentleman received visitors and kept his business office. The Durga Mandap would be part of the outside house. Thus, when Lord Nityananda entered the outside house, Ramachandra Khan was in the inside house with the members of his family. When Nityananda Prabhu arrived, Ramachandra Khan did not receive him personally, but sent his servant to inform him indirectly to go away. Sevakabale Gosani More Pataila Kana Gashthera Gare Tomaya Dibhavasa Stana. The servant informed Lord Nityananda, My dear sir, Ramachandra Khan has sent me to accommodate you in some common man's house. Vasasthana, Vasasthana. I shall give you Diva Vasasthana. I shall give you a place in some ordinary residential place. You can stay there. And uh, then he goes on to say, Goyalar Goshalahaya Atyanta Vistara Ihan Sankirna Stale 
Homar Manusha Apar. You might go to the house of a milkman, for the cow shed is spacious. Whereas the place here in the Durga Mandap is insufficient because you have many followers with you. You might go to the house of a milkman, for the cow shed is spacious. So this was Ramachandra Khan's suggestion to Lord Nityananda. Oh, don't stay here with me. I have, or in my, I have very beautiful accommodation. Don't stay here with me. You're not welcome in my house. Why don't you find some place like the house of a milkman? <coughs> there, there's some cow shed where the cows uh, uh, are accommodated. So you and your group, you can be accommodated there. It's a spacious place, so I recommend that. Bitari Achila Shuni Krodhe Barila Ata Ata Hasi Gosani Kahite Lagila. When Nityananda Prabhu heard this order from the servant of Ramachandra Khan, he became very angry and came out. Laughing very loudly, he spoke as follows Satya Kahe E Ghara Mora Yogyanaya. Mlecha go vadha kare tarya tara yogya haya. Ramachandra Khan has spoken rightly. This place is unfit for me. It is fit for cow killing meat eaters. So I don't I don't I'm not sure why Ramachandra, this Ramachandra, has the name Khan. I think that would be unusual for a Hindu, but uh, anyway. He's more or less described as following the practices of the Hindus, so he has this Durga Mandap at his house. And his house is arranged as uh, described in the purport, well to do Hindu gentleman. So it's constructed in that way. But uh, Nityananda Prabhu is. Uh, Indicating what uh, what is Ramachandra Khan's really pos real position here. Mlecha govadha kare. The midi it is not fit for Nityananda Prabhu. He's saying this is mlecha govadha kare. It's this is a fit place for the meat eaters who kill cows. That's who you're your house is suitable for. Not very complimentary. Eta Bali Krodhe Gosani Utiya Chalila Tare Danda Dite Se Grama Grame Na Rahila Having said this, Lord Dityananda stood up and left in an angry mood. How could that be a devotee angry? <coughs> to chastise Ramachandra Khan, he did not even stay in that village. Well, some think that uh, devotees, uh, if they display anger or show that uh, they have been insulted, that this uh, may disqualify them. But Nityananda Prabhu is the most exalted servant of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He took offense. He became angry. And he cursed Ramachandra Khan. He wasn't happy with, with this man, what, the way he was behaving with him and with his followers. So he told the servant of Ramachandra Khan, Ramachandra Khan has spoken rightly. This place is unfit for me. It is fit for cow-killing meat-eaters. Having said this, Lord Nityananda stood up and left in an angry mood. 
But that he wasn't just angry, he decided he was going to chastise Ramachandra Khan also. Did he, was his, his idea to give him a slap? No. Do you say some angry words to Ramachandra Khan? No. To chastise Ramachandra Khan, he did not even stay in that village. He would not even stay in the village where Ramachandra Khan, uh, that Ramachandra Khan presided over. His home was unsuitable. Uh, Nityananda Prabhu was showing actually because he is in this village, the village is unsuitable. Because a wealthy person like this has control uh, directly or indirectly over the people in his immediate surroundings. And uh, Nityananda would not even stay in the village, which was the home of Ramachandra Khan. Ihan Ramachandra Khan, Sevika Agga Dila, Gosani Yahan Vasila, Taramati Kodaila. Ramachandra Khan ordered the servant to dig up the dirt in the place where Nityananda Prabhu had sat. So where someone sits, not considered a, a, a one should not sit in a, in a sacred place, and uh, where one sits, one should not place sacred objects like our books or uh, Japamala, etc. So Ramachandra Khan, he considered that Lord Dityananda had uh, uh, spoiled uh, this sacred place this uh, Durga Mandapa where he was uh, offering uh, sacrifices to goddess Durga. So Ramachandra Khan ordered his servant to dig up the dirt in the place where Nityananda Prabhu had sat. Like toxic waste. Get rid of it. Gomaya Jali Lepila Sabha Mandira Prangana Tabu Ramachandra Mana Nahoila Prasana. To purify the Durga Mandap temple and the courtyard. Now, there's not only Nityananda Prabhu was filthy, but his followers also filthy. They, they're all contaminated. Wherever they were, that place had to be cleansed. To purify the Durga Mandap temple and the courtyard, Ramachandra Khan sprinkled and smeared it with water mixed with cow dung, but still his mind was unsatisfied. Dasya, Dasyu Vritti Kare Ramachandra, Rajare Na Deya Kara, Krudha Hona Mlacha Ujira Oila Taragara. Ramachandra Khan's business was questionable, for he tried to avoid paying income tax to the government. Therefore, the government minister of finance was angry and came to his residence. Asi se Durga Mandap Vasa Koila Avadya Vadha Kadi Mangsa se Gare Randhaila the Mohammedan minister made his residence in the Durga Mandap of Ramachandra Khan. So, Ramachandra Khan thought that the place had been contaminated by Lord Nityananda, who was showing himself as a devotee of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and a devotee of Krishna. And his residence, his, his uh, associates, all cowherd men, devotees of Krishna and followers of Nityananda Prabhu and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Ramachandra Khan, he thought, oh, these, these persons who we consider uh, as uh, whatever they touch is purified by their touch. The Ramachandra thought, oh, they have disgraced, they have polluted the Durga Mandapa. So he ordered it cleansed and purified with cow dung and cow urine. 
Well, then this Mohammedan minister, uh, deciding a time to this man pay his taxes, be pun or punished for not paying his taxes, uh, the tax collector, he came and uh, decided, oh, this Durga Mandap, I'll make this my residence. I'm parking myself here. The Mohammedan minister made his residence in the Durga Mandap of Ramachandra Khan. He killed a cow and cooked the meat at that very place. Ramachandra Khan didn't send the Mohammedan away. Of course, I doubt that he could have. <coughs> so he had to tolerate that this Mohammedan, and now he's here. I thought the place was polluted by Lord Nityananda and his associates. Now this Mohammedan minister is here, killed the cow and cooked the meat right in that place where Nityananda Prabhu had been previously. Sri Putra Sahita Ramachandrare Bandhya Taragara Grama Lute Tina Dina Rahiya He arrested Ramachandra Khan along with his wife and sons and then he continuously plundered the house and village for three days. So he not only took the wealth, the treasury of Ramachandra Khan, plundered everything in the house, but also the village. So the villagers had to suffer also as a result of this. Seigare Tina Dina Kare Amedya Randhana Aradina Sabalana Karila Gamana. In that very room, he cooked the flesh of a cow for three consecutive days. Then the next day he left, accompanied by his followers. Jati Dhana Jana Kanera Sakala Laila Bahudina. Paryanta Grama Ujada Rahila. The Mohammedan minister took away Ramachandra Khan's position, wealth, and followers. For many days the village remained deserted. Everyone ran away, fearful of what this Mohammedan minister might do. Mahantera Apamana Yedesha Grame Haya. Eka Janara Doshe Sabha, Desha Ujadaya. Wherever an advanced devotee is insulted for one man's fault, the entire town or place is affected. Wherever an advanced devotee is insulted, for one man's fault, the entire town or place is affected, afflicted. So, asat sangha. We are advised to avoid bad association. Wherever an advanced devotee is insulted, for one man's fault, the entire town or place is afflicted. Because we may, we may not be the ones to directly offend a Vaishnava. But if we keep company with someone who offends an, an advanced Vaishnava, <coughs> Mahantara, persons highly advanced in spiritual life, if we keep company with them, then for his fault, we may also have to suffer. Wherever an advanced devotee is insulted for one man's fault, the entire town or place is afflicted. Now previously we, we have seen that uh, 
instances of this. Sometimes uh, a society may, the leaders of a spiritual society, a Krishna conscious movement, may offend a exalted devotee like Srila Sridhar Maharaj or Srila Govinda Maharaj. And even though there may be many innocent persons in that mission, organization, because uh, if the leaders engage in such practices, then many will have to suffer because of that. Haridas Thakura Chali Oila Chanda Pure As Asiya Rahile Balaram Acharya Gare Haridas Thakur walked until he came to the village known as Chandapur. There he stayed at the house of Balaram Acharya. Purport. <clears throat> the village of Chandapura is situated near the confluence of the rivers Ganges and Jamuna at Saptagram in the district of Hooghly. Chandapura is just east of the house of the two brothers Hiranya and Govardhan, the father and uncle of Raghunath Das Goswami. In Chandapura lived Balaram Acharya and Yadunandan Acharya, the priest of these two personalities. And when Haridas Thakur went there, he lived with them he lived with them. Shilbhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur says that the name of this village was later changed to Krishnapur or Krish Krishnapura. Hiranya Govardhan Dui Mulakera Maju Madar Tara Purohita Balaram Nama Tanra Hiranya and Govardhan were the two governmental treasurers in that division of the country. Their priest was named Balaram Acharya. Mahantera Apamana Ye Desha Grame Haya Eka Janara Doshe Saba Desha Ujadaya. Wherever an advanced devotee is insulted for one man's fault, the entire town or place is afflicted. Everything. <sighs> Srila Sridhar Maharaj said that it is not easy to offend a Vaishnava. But it is not impossible either. And uh, so our standard advice is 
Chunarapi Sunichena Tororapi Sahishnuna Amanina Manadena Kirtaniya Sadahari. This is the safe position. And offer respect to others without looking for any respect for oneself. That's the safe position. And everyone is actually we're all advised to follow that. But there is another position, and that is the position of a preacher. And a preacher cannot always take the safe position. In fact, preaching means a fight, and fighting means risk. So when we preach, that means there's always some risk. Even you know, just going out and just doing some collecting on the sidewalks. There's risk that the police will arrest us. Just uh, because they want to. <laughs> if we and if we go to some private property like a, a shopping center, a shopping mall, or something like that, uh, any number of places, and uh, do uh, book distribution or collecting, then uh, there's risk involved there. Risk of arrest, or just risk of embarrassment. Uh, someone will, the, the security guard will catch us and tell us to go away and we may and we may not go away we may think okay I'll just go to another part and and uh, take my chances there and then if uh, noticed again by the same security guard then he'll say well I told I told you you had to go why didn't you do that uh, I told you to leave this place and uh, Maybe maybe uh, we even agreed to that, and then we'll be found that we are not being truthful or um, something like that. So that's like an embarrassing situation. That uh, if we say yes, yes, I'll I'll leave. Don't worry, and then go to another place, and then he finds us again. Then we risk. Oh, maybe now he'll actually call the police or uh, it's just an embarrassing situation I told him I would leave but he's caught me here but those are the sorts of risks that one should take for preaching and one actually should not feel embarrassed who should be embarrassed is the one telling the preacher that he should leave the place he is, he is the one. And probably they do feel embarrassed. In many cases, some these people are not always, they don't always dislike devotees. Sometimes they, uh, they may like the devotees and their job uh, demands that they take a position in, in uh, opposition to what the devotees are doing. But devotees are following a higher law. And what is the, what is the higher law? Sarva Dharman Paritya Mame Kang Sharanang Vraja. Sarva Dharman Paritya leaving everything of this world. We don't care for anything of this world. Law or no law. There is no law. For one who is serving the Supreme Lord, his order is the law. That's the law. There's no higher law. There's no law other than that. He makes the law. What he says, we follow that. And even if it means uh, violating some lower standard of law making. So the country's law, the city's law, the uh, law of laws of morality even, the general laws of humanity, social etiquette, religion, all of these things, Krishna tells his devotee, forget it, do what I say. And uh, certainly Arjuna's arguments were all based on the law. When, when Arjuna was telling Krishna he didn't want to fight, then he was citing reasons from the Vedas why it was impermissible to fight with one's uh, relative, teachers, etc. And Krishna 
didn't accept that. He, Krishna informed Arjuna, you can take that position, but my position is that I want them all killed. and they, So therefore they will be killed. Whether you are part of it or not, so just walking away from the battle doesn't mean that what I want, what what I want, what Krishna wants, won't happen. It will happen anyway. But that's the higher law. The higher law is whatever Krishna wants. No one can interfere with that. No one can stop it. So. Um, who Krishna wants uh, to live, no one can kill. Who Krishna wants dead, no one can save. He must die. So, preaching, I'm talking about Bhagavad Gita and the battlefield, and preaching is a battlefield. Yesterday someone reminded me of a verse, Nikila Bhuvana Maya Chinna Vichinna Kartri. A verse written by Srila Shirar Maharaj regarding Saraswati Thakur. Uh, and the idea of the verse is something like this, slashing and crashing his way through uh, the illusion of Maya, destroying Maya. That was Saraswati Thakur. His position. He was an advanced devotee. Wherever an advanced devotee is insulted, so he was an advanced devotee, and he was insulted. Our Swami Maharaj, Srila Prabhupada, he was an advanced devotee. He was insulted. By his God brothers, want to speak of others. Srila Sridhar Maharaj, he was insulted by leaders of a society I referred to earlier. And, and Sridhar Maharaj and Swami Maharaj and Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, they also insulted others. They insulted religionists, swamis, spiritual people, etc. Bhaktivinoda Thakur insulted a great, someone who was highly respected as a great yogi. He insulted him. Highly insulted him. First determining whether this man was really had any substantial connection with Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu or not. And when, when the man, uh, the man who was imprisoned by Bhaktivinoda Thakur, because he was a faker, a fraud, so Bhaktivinoda Thakur first decided to find out for himself, is the man really a fraud or not? And the man gave himself away uh, when he uh, proclaimed himself to be non-different from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Then Bhaktivinoda Thakur knew for certain the man is a fraud. Not only a fraud, but he is insulting, he is an offender to the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur insulted him. This man had this these yogis, they sometimes would keep this top knot of hair on their heads. They're not, they won't cut their hair. They keep, just keep winding and winding and winding. And uh, this, so they have some idea that this gives them some power. And some, somehow they get some power, whether it's by that means or whatever. But this man was supposed to get, get some power from that. And when, Bhakti, when the, 